What I'm going to talk about today is um, is the project we have started at Leo Pharma. It's a Danish company. I will tell about the company also uh, and a little about myself. But this project we are going into, we are very ambitious. Within a period of two years, we will roll out to all our European sites uh, a complete pie collection of data. And I will tell about um, the way we approach it, because there are so many things that could go wrong. I have been in this industry for many years and done many projects. So the most important thing is to know what you should not do more than what you, you should do. So let's see here. This is uh, the agenda. I'll briefly tell about uh, our company. And we have introduced something called a digitalization program. Leo is a mid-sized company, but we have a very ambitious digitalization program with a lot of projects. One of them is the Pi infrastructure we have decided. I will briefly tell about the current state in the company. We're an old company with some new factories and old factories. And then we will go into the production history in the Pi data infrastructure, where we have launched this for us, a huge project. And we have split it up in two sections. The first was to gather experience. So we have had a pilot project actually running Pi now very successfully. And then by experience from this, we have launched this global Pi project, as we call it now, where we are in the middle of, of planning it and building the infrastructure. So um, I'll proceed here. This is me. Peter has already told about me, but I have a background uh, in manufacturing as a production manager myself and know the business from this side. And then I've worked with, uh, with data intelligence and Pi for some years also. So um, I got this job half a year ago and it was so exciting. So uh, I just wanted it because it was challenging to work with this rollout here. Yes, this is Leo Pharma, our company. We are based in Denmark. It's uh, owned by a foundation, so we have no shareholders. Uh, and we have a turnover about uh, one and a half billion euros, um, 5,500 employees. And um, as many companies, we uh, invest a lot in research and development, 20% uh, of our um, turnover. Uh, we sold our projects in more than 130 countries. And as you see up there, uh, we are a leader in medical dermatology. And what is this? It's, it's, it's about medicine for skin diseases. Uh, so we uh, have psoriasis medicine, all kinds of medicines for skin. And our biggest, biggest product is actually not for skin, but um, that's the rule that confirms the exception. Uh, it's an um, anticoagulant uh, product. Yep. This is uh, our location. When we say global company, it's actually a regional company. Our headquarters is in Denmark. You can see up there, you know the map. And we have um, two factories in Ireland, one in Cork and one in Dublin, and um, one in France also. And then we have two in Denmark also, actually. And uh, one in Italy, we just purchased a, a factory from Bayer in Milan area. Uh, so uh, we are spread well around Europe. This is the realm we look into when we are going to make this global Pi solution. So we have had a lot of thoughts, how shall we do it best? Should we have servers on each side or a global server or whatever? So I will tell about that during the speech here. As I said earlier, we have made this digitalization program. And, and this contains a lot of initiatives. One of them framed in and top is the Pi. Uh, historian or Pi infrastructure project. But there are projects as, um, as production historian, uh, PAT project, augmented reality, electronic batch reports, uh, business intelligence, robotics process, maintenance management. We are going to in, uh, install a new SAP PM system. All those projects run concurrently, and, and it's a little challenging, I will say. So we have to think that into our uh, project also, because we are somehow in the center of a lot of it. Um, but I will focus on our Pi infrastructure project here. And why do we do it? We actually say that uh, the reason why we want to implement Pi is that we would like to enable to get 
insight in the processes to improve yields, but also to have a data warehouse that could be used for anything later on. It could be counters for SAP PM, uh, it could be integration to EBR, but the main purpose is actually to give us this insight in the production, to increase yield and give knowledge. So how does it look today, right now today? Uh, you know this picture is very classical. There's a lot of data sources. If a chemist or an analyst want to go and say, I want to know what's happening in this fermenter or this process, he's really stuck. So he had to dig into Excel sheets and get out data from files and so on. It's difficult. Uh, so, so the main purpose is that we think that this should be easy. Data should be available for those who need it. We don't know who need it right now, but they should be available. That's our leading star for this project. We should have quality data available from the production in a data warehouse. And they should be contextualized so we, we know when a batch is started and stopped. Um, but today we have nothing. How do we do it then? Let's talk about this Pi Historian infrastructure project. This is how our company looks today. Uh, you see, we have more than maybe 100 systems, different brands in the production, old PLC systems, SCADA systems, building systems, and a lot of them are very old. There are uh, some equipment that are not on our network, automated islands. Uh, there's no standardization of all those systems. In a way, in this digitalization program, we have a target to standardize our system, but it don't happen overnight. It will take several years where we wait for a new change and so on there. But to look at, at those bubbles you can see there in the button, it actually shows the cordiality of all the different systems. How, how do we approach that? Because we have uh, those five, six sites there with all those different systems. And of course, uh, Pi is very strong there because of its ability to connect to various kinds of systems. Really, it has a huge potential uh, with all those different interfaces to strange old systems. But during this project, we, we must recognize that we cannot connect all. Something is not even on a network, and we are talking about making it as a GMP solution here. So this is the challenges right now. Okay, how did we approach it? For If you see up here uh, the high-level plan in the bottom there, I can try to point here. See here? This is the high-level plan. You see the year up here. And before this is 2019. We are right here now. For two years ago, we started a pilot project. Actually, we decided on, we want to look at Pi. Can we use that uh, for a pilot project? So we implemented a non-GMP pilot project on our current fermentation factory where we produce this fusidine. This is um, a product for, um, for with some penicillin effect in to put on skins. You probably know it already. It's sold all over the world. It's a fermentation product. And uh, we made a pilot project where we collect um, data from that batch context from uh, 12 fermenters. Uh, I will tell about this pilot project. And the reason why we do that was to get this knowledge and maybe also to get some yield improvement because we were pressed there. When we have collected all the experience where we are now, we have started what we call the Big Pi project. And it's actually running now. And I will tell about that afterwards. We aim at being finished with collecting all our production sites uh, start 21. So it's ambitious. There's no servers yet on anything. OK, our pilot project started two years ago, and it's running now. And the challenge was there that we have this Fusidine uh, API production in Denmark, and, and there was a declining yield. Everything was manually collected, but we could see by, by plotting in during the last 20 years, how was the yield going? And it was actually decreasing over the years. Uh, at the same time, suddenly, uh, there was a surge in demand for this product. Suddenly, it starts taking off. People want it. So we have a, a surge in demand and a declining yield. 
So at the same time, it was decided um, to build a new factory. But if we, sh we should have built a new factory with this low yield, this factory should have been huge. So the pilot project, one of the main targets was there. We must get inside so we can restore the yield or even make it better than it was in 92 there. That will, we can earn money on that, of course, but that also enable us to build actually a smaller new factory. So the factory you're building now to replace this one from 2020 will be smaller compared to what it would have been if we had this bad yield there. And actually, Pi helped us there tremendously, giving the researchers this ability to look into the process and work with it. Um, and of course, we will get all the knowledge also uh, from Pi there. This is, was how it looked before. There was some fermenters where they collect things and all the historic data were plotted mainly into uh, paper sheets and Excel systems. And when we decided for Pi here, we also decided to put a lot of extra collectors on to put in there. And this project were um, run two years ago and it's, it's running now. And um, what we see there is that we get a lot of data. We get LIMS results together with the fermentation data. Uh, there are pilot fermenters connected on, so we, we have a tremendous lot of data giving us a full picture of the fermentation here. And uh, data are readily available in this warehouse. This was a project we did ourselves, but for the pie installation we got help from um, NNE Pharma Plan in Denmark, my old company also there. Uh, and I, I cannot, I cannot, I have probably said it before, it's a big success, uh, because the chemist now has got a place to get their data and, and make all the, the analysis and everything. Um, and how do they do that, uh, actually? Because there's a lot of products to Pi, but, but in this case here, I will say the most popular product is, of course, Pi Vision, because it's, it's the daily tool. They use it quickly to go in and get an overview and everything and compare data. The main tools they use are the Pi Vision, but also Pi Data Link, as we know. It's, it's quite traditional also with Pi Data Link. But as we see often, what such analysts and chemists want is actually data they can put into their uh, standard tools. It could be SimCare or um, Jump or whatever. And, um, and this kind of extraction is um, paramount for them. Uh, we have also uh, implemented Pi Web API for Excel. It's tremendous to make denormalized data. So a chemist can go in and say, okay, I want for the last 1,000 fermentations, I want uh, columnized every pH and temperature value and everything, and then further into the analysis tools. So the conclusion of this pilot project, we had this uh, decline in the yield in the current fermentation. The challenges were that the, the yield was declining and we were actually moving after a process optimization for the design of the new plant because we have to build that smaller uh, and we needed experience with Pi. All those is uh, tick marked. Uh, so the benefits, I will say, when we ended the pilot there before we get, get into our new project was that we got a yield increase. Uh, the scale of the new pilot plant could be reduced. So it's a lot of money. Uh, and we made this, I will call a vibrant community for our data analyzed uh, using the data. Uh, and what I see also there, and I've seen as consultant many times, that it's very important that they get this easy access to data in a denormalized format. I have worked with Tableau and this kind of tool for many years, and it's more and more like we want denormalized data. Um, that makes it easy to continue with. Uh, and this pilot project also created the ne needed drive from the users to say to the management, we want this here for our whole production throughout uh, Europe. Okay, so we, we get in to see how can we make this global Pi system uh, project there. So we set up uh, a purpose for the project and it was as it said here, we want to enable us to make decisions and process optimization based on data. That's the primary reason. 
Another reason also is that we want to have a production warehouse where we can serve other kind of legacy systems with uh, production warehouse data. Um, and so how will we do it there? We will make one simple, one uh, common system. Uh, and we selected OSIS of Pi there because uh, the uh, pilot was so well and uh, the users were happy with it. And it has those very strong interface capabilities. And for this uh, global rollout, we have partnered up with CQS Integration. Uh, they are very well placed throughout Europe and have a, 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 is, is one of the strongest Pi integrators at all. So we are partnering up with them and actually using some of their models. I will show a little later. The way we will do it is uh, we will do it in a layered approach. Remember, this is uh, Pharma, this is GMP. So we will have split it up in phases of this one. We will make the infrastructure first, all the infrastructure build that with our IT department there. And on top, and it will be qualified. And then on top of that, we will have the OC soft software and it will be qualified also. So we have a next layer qualified. Now we only need to collect data in order to make the warehouse. So this is actually ongoing now. We are building the infrastructure and afterwards we will have TQS to, uh, to implement the Pi software and qualify that. Concurrently, you remember the time plan before, uh, we are doing something called site assessment. We, are, we have actually been round on each site going out and looked at each PLC to see how can we connect that. And, and a lot of it cannot be connected, so uh, we will just omit that in the first round here. When we have this total overview, we are in the face of that now, uh, we will prioritize where to start. And I know for sure that our prioritization will be there, where can we get the biggest gain? So it will be API first and maybe bulk plant and facility and then uh, latest it will be fill and pack because it is automated island fill and pack so it's not so interesting right now. Okay, how is it uh, set up? What will it end with? The production environment, it will be with central Pi servers. We have some considerations. Should we have a Pi server on each side or should we have a regional in Europe? We are a regional company and we ended up with that. There is a lot to save on that because we don't have to qualify a Pi server on each side and have local uh, administration and everything there. So we, we think this should be a centralized setup. One server and then API collector nodes out there. It's very important for our further work also with qualification if we can centralize it all. Because our sites, many of them don't have the competences and qualification on this kind of equipment there. Uh, we will select the visualization suite from OCSoft. It's uh, uh, unlimited users with all their, the tools there. It's very fine. We'll have a RT reports because we will use it for batch reporting also the platform. Uh, and then uh, this, uh, all the interfaces also there available. It will be a size of approximately 100,000 sacks. I think we will next year have 60,000 and then we will reach maybe 80,000 uh, when we finish. And remember, we have a central Pi server and we will have some interface node on each side. Making collection and being a buffer if something happens. Uh, and then of course we will utilize AFEF also, this very nice uh, meta layer for it. And uh, I will say one of the things about the, the collective for the interface nodes and the Pi servers. We have redundant Pi servers and redundant interface nodes. It is um, it's really important when we have all this patching of software and everything that we can do it on the one string and then see if it's okay and then go to the other one there. Uh, because it has to be run by our IT department, a lot of it. So we have to have this assurance that it will not break down just for five minutes. That was the uh, the environment. The data scope is we are in a batch world mainly. So uh, we will see for the different size. I have split it up in this kind of areas there, API, formulation, pack and fill. And we will get the time series data, alarm and events, of course. And somewhere we will get the batch context also if the source can deliver it. I say if, if there's no real batch context in the source, we will not go out and make a lot of work to make it. 
then we will just not have it in the system. Um, okay. I said it's very important in this kind of project that you know what you want and what you don't want. Because if, if you say yes to a lot of things in there, everything will go wrong. So I have set up this manifest, what is in scope. And you can see in scope is there to establish this environment there. But more important is what is out of scope. And I've said we will not collect if there does not exist an interface. We will not tamper and build anything ourselves or, or get TQS or someone to do it. It will be too expensive and risky. Uh, we will not make a collection from Excel sheets and odd sources and everything. Just plain interfaces it should be. And only for equipment that is on our factory land. We will not try to connect something not on the factory land because it will, we will lose momentum if our projects will stop and wait for that. So if someone wants to have an equipment in Pi, they must be responsible for putting on a factory land to get it there. And, and the, the last thing there is a little strange, someone will think, we will not in this project design and qualify batch reports, make KPIs and analyze and everything. And, and why that? Because that's what Pi is about. But I will say something, if we build this perfect data warehouse, use our strengths to make the data structure and everything, then everything is natural for Pi. People know how to use it. So we will train users in using it. Then they can do whatever they want with it. But we will make the tools available for them. OK, this is the rough rollout plan. Uh, you see up here in the top there. There, this is all the infrastructure stuff. And then we will take sites one by one down here. And then the one very important down here is what we call organization change management. That is actually to get the users engaged and trained to use it. Because when the platform is built, the users said get the value out of it. It's not the project. OK, that was the site assessment. We use TQS model here, TQS integration, because we go out on every site and deep dive into everything there to get an overview. What can we connect and what can we not connect? And we have said, this is how our landscape will look. You can recognize our factories down in the bottom, the thing on the manufacturing level that we're going to collect. Here we have the API, the interface nodes there. And here is the production Pi system up there and the development. We will only have a development system and a production system. We will not have a validation system. I will say uh, for myself, it's overkill because we have a two-strain system over here. It gives us a lot of opportunities there, and then we have development system. Uh, and then we will place that in a DMZ zone, so it will be the, um, the web-driven things from Pi will be available on our corporate network. Also, again, to make access easy for users. That's paramount for the project. This is a rollout plan. You know, when we have finished all the infrastructure, we will roll out one side at a time. And uh, it, it's, it's easy in a way because all the infrastructure is placed there. The collection nodes is there. So we just have to go in and collect from the sites there on the qualified platform there. This is from uh, TQS also. I like very much their, their setup there because when we have built the platform, we actually go out on the development system connect the systems we want to connect there, test if they work. If they work, we run it to uh, production. All the other thing is built prior to it in the, in the initial project there. OK, the more boring part here is the validation. But it's also the, the, the most risky one for such a project. So we are using a lot of effort right now to uh, get our quality people on board here. And again, uh, we had this set up, delivered from TQS. I really, this is really a beautiful setup, I will say. Because in top here, this is the kind of documents we have to feed in from our company, a URS, of course, or something. And then we have for the, the platform, the infrastructure, there will be this document set there. And for each site, there will be this kind of documents there. So actually, 
when a site is up running, we will end up with only having a design specification for the interface node telling which equipment are connected. And then I hope we can end up, when we connect the equipment, we should just make a risk analysis and then update the design specification. Everything other is central in this documentation package. And, and it's important. It's paramount for the project because we will collect maybe 500 equipments. So we have to have this very, very slim validation approach there. But uh, I will be challenged when we come further here. OK, last thing here I have is why do we focus on building the data warehouse? I said we will not make reports. We will not make analyses. Uh, all those things we talk about here, also collecting data, uh, exchanging data with sub PM and so on. That's because I'm an old data warehouse man. I've worked with that for many years. And I know the most important thing is that we have a good structure with the time series data. And we have this uh, good structure with the, uh, the batch model and, and uh, events and everything. And the AFEF is a tremendous product because for the first time we can decouple the user needs from the warehouse needs, because we know we can do everything with AF to make this meter layer available for your users. And that's enabled us in this project to focus on building the warehouse, collecting the data, and then we know everything is possible afterwards if the data is there, of course. So building the warehouse, but then train users to use it. Then we will have this flourishing environment of people using the data. Uh, I will say I was a, a Tableau consultant for some years, and they call this here liberal arts impact. And you said it the first day also, Peter, or some of your colleagues, that if we can bring data out to the real users, business users in IT, analyst or chemist or whatever, then we will have liberal arts impact. The people knowing the processes, the people knowing the data, if they can have the data at hand available, they don't need IT projects, IT consultants to help them. They are free and we will have this huge gain in, um, in what can be done. So, yep, we are building a warehouse. And it also has an, another benefit. It removes all the noise from me when I run the project because I just say, stop, we just build a warehouse. We don't talk integration and everything now. You can do everything afterwards. OK, conclusion for this global pipe project that I'm in right now. We will collect data from a lot of sources. This one, warehouse building, validation strategy. If you're doing the same one day, think about that. Make the best validation strategy. Remove noise by focusing and use a lot of time to get the organization with you. Bring in training prior to uh, the system is ready. Yeah, and benefits. Uh, this is my predicted benefits, but we will get them if we have a good data model and a good data system. This is a summary, and it's just what I've tell, told earlier also. Pilot project is a good idea. Make it non-GMP so you're not burdened by all those kind of things there. Uh, have a tight scope on building a data warehouse, not on using the data. The AFEF -E flexibility is a really good system today, really perfect for making this meter layer to decouple it uh, from all the uses of the system. And then if it's a big company, the computers are so strong today, I believe you can easily have a regional setup with one Pi server covering five or six sites. Um, that was my word. So uh, despite the interruption there, uh, we are ready for questions. Uh, let's take the next one here. Yes. Hi, this is Denek. Uh, from Takeda. I got a question regarding a standardization of the archive. If you uh, are thinking about future use of AFEF, you need to be prepared on the layer of archive with some at least uh, conventions for naming of the tags and so to uh, allow the future ease use of the AFEF. Did you approach this one as well? Yes, uh, I will say in the project we will build conventions, of course, for text and, and naming structures and everything, and we will build uh, the, the qualified 
uh, meta layer with AF and EF. But I think, I will say, uh, it's not maybe OCSoft best wishes, but I will say we will keep the AF more st static. We will not, it will not be a full playground for everything because I will see it as this meta layer that can serve data to other systems where people can connect data. This should be the production data warehouse. So it will not be a full playground. Maybe we will have a, a non-GMP playground for people doing it. But it will be the production data warehouse. The connection with other sources will mainly happen outside in, uh, in Power BI or something, uh, some other place. Was that an answer? OK. <laughs> Um, uh, one of your decision-making um, criteria is kind of defining which one that you can connect out of the box and not uh, to start with. And you mentioned about 300 plus of data sources. Would you be able to describe how many percentage of those currently not being able to be um, connected yes. and, and what, what type of, of, of interfaces that was? I will say... Uh what we discovered, CQS and I, when we traveled around is that uh, all our batch-related production from uh, the API and bulk, we are able to collect all of that because it has been put on network and there are nice PCS systems. But the filling and packaging lines, it's islands with single PLCs and everything. And I guess it will be too expensive to, uh, to connect them in the beginning. And I think we will end up with an approach that we will only connect new fill and pack lines when they are implemented from, from now on. We have good uh, quality systems. So a percentage will be maybe 70% of the, equip, uh, the equipment we will be able to connect. And the other we will just wait and see to keep momentum, yes. Thank you for your presentation. A question regarding the pilot. Uh, you mentioned that you added a few sensors uh, during the pilot uh, project. Uh, what is the reason for adding new sensors? Is it to build uh, the business case to sell the project to the upper management? Uh, the reason was that, that uh, before uh, only uh, not all the relevant uh, data was collected from the fermentation process. And the chemist uh, identified 12 or, or 16 extra measurements that need to be captured in order to get a full picture. Uh, there were some gas measurings and uh, different things. So, so they identified, they called it a PAT project actually because of those extra sensors that were put in. Uh, and, and it was also used in this pilot project uh, to be able to design the new factory uh, by getting all this data in there. And, it, and the pie has really lifted uh, the knowledge so much there. Well, you can see in the slides, I think the sensors are mentioned also there when you get the slide deck afterwards. Hi, this is Hans from CSL Bearing. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, one reason I'm here is just uh, because we think I'm elaborating whether for our company it would make sense to do a similar thing, to plug in, a, I would say, a data historian infrastructure as a data provision for whoever wants to work with the data. Now, as usual, it's, it costs some money and how to convince senior management. So just, it's a hypothetical question. If your pilot project wouldn't have been successful, do you think you would have nevertheless would have implemented that because you expect some benefit? You no, know, at the end you never know whether it, it materializes or not. I, I, I get your point, and it's a little luxury for me to say that uh, that uh, we don't care about that. But 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 we have from the pilot project that that there was a clear indication that this was important for yields, and. Uh, with all the other initiatives going on there, it has been cited from top management to set all this digitalization ahead. Then they know from the, the plant maintenance project also that if they can get counselors from the expensive equipment, that will also help so on. But uh, 
But, but it's a luxury for me, I don't have to argue, because <laughs> it was fed from the beginning. But I think you can find some generic argument, and especially in pharma, I will say it's a kind of license to operate also, that, that you have easily available data uh, available in the retention period. Uh, I, I say it could be difficult if you have to dig in papers behind. Uh, is license to operate also. But for money, uh, find, find good one and then get freedom to build this warehouse. But it's like when you put in electricity, uh, when you set up electricity, people don't ask, what, what will you use that for? Because I see this is infrastructure data. Uh, but of course, the arguments must be there. I know that. Yeah, in our case, it's a bit more different as we have five, six different data historian, I would say, established uh, not across everything, but there is a bit, and there is a spot, and there is a bit, and then just at the end you have to wrap that, wrap that out and uh, replace it with uh, one. Would, Otherwise, it doesn't make sense because if you have five different you're, you're technical right. solutions. C can I got just what, what, ten seconds for answer here? Because we actually have the same with a lot of there was some one in SQL everywhere. We keep them because it will be too expensive for our project to replace it. We keep them. We have decided that with CQS also, and then we make our own collection. And if someone get money in the future, then they can use Pi instead of the NESQL there. But but the project must roll on like a train, so we build our own, and then we can replace it later. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Hi. Uh, my name is Martin Rus uh, from Bayer. Yeah. Here, 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 on your right side. Oh. Um, I'm very interested in the validation approach uh, because very often we are talking about the technical solutions and in uh, uh, my environment uh, validation is uh, yeah a lot of efforts that we have uh, uh, yeah to consider. Um, what I'm interested in is um, how do you convince the QA of this approach, of a central approach, or is your standard approach to your company? Um, because uh, my understanding is well, usually we are uh, validating all the system very locally, and I have seen very few central validated systems, so, uh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, I am not sure if we will succeed yet, but one thing important is that if we tell the QA, we, have, we use a vendor uh, integrator that are one of the best in, in the class, and, and they recommend this kind of system there. Then we put on top our own centralization approach on, and, and, and it's strong arguments that, that we have this strong vendor in there with this, they work at Pfizer and everywhere. Uh, that's good, but, but the central approach, uh, it is also helped by some of the local QA people when we are out, they say, we cannot take responsible for this, we don't know nothing about it. So, so we, will, we will try to say those servers, the API nodes, and the central servers is actually centrally owned. It's not the site owning our servers on our factory land. The only thing they are involved in is that when we connect to a machine, will it affect performance or security there? That, that's, that's what we hope it could end up with a risk approach. And then I also mentioned for them ASTM 2500, where it's more subject matter expert based than quality based. Let's see what's happened. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, in one year, I know more, but I think we will succeed because it's also money. Hi, um, and it's Cesare from Regeneron in Ireland. Uh, you mentioned on the slides uh, you are connecting uh, limbs to the historian. How do you do that? Well, I will say that in the pilot project, it's actually connected by manually tampering into Excel. But I will say when we get our production system, we will make one central interface to the, uh, the limb system. Uh, either by putting the limbs values into discrete tags on timestamps or by putting the values into AF. We will do that ourselves. Uh, yeah. So, so in a way, you can say a limbs measurement is actually a process measurement coming a week after. But it, it's still a part of the process, I will say. So it belongs in Pi also. Yeah. We can talk about it later. I have a lot of them. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Paul. Give him a big hand of applause. <laughs> Great, excellent.